Get ready with me this morning while I tell you the story about how I almost broke my vagine. This happened when I was a freshman in college and I was dating this terrible guy. Definition of fun was doing things we literally never should have been doing. So one night he decides he wants to go rooftop jumping. Which if anyone is wondering, rooftop jumping is essentially when you climb up to the top of a building and you jump from roof to roof. Obviously, not the smartest decision. I understand that. I was a freshman in college. That's just like what you do when you're an idiot freshman in college dating a dumb boy. So we gathered a bunch of people and we headed on our way. Mind you, it, a bunch of people meaning it was 10 boys and me. So I climb to the top of this building with these boys to jump from the roof to the roof and the jump is just way too far, we're just like not doing it. As I'm climbing down the like, this like great ladder on the side of the building, I decide to show off, be cool, and jump down the last like five rungs and just like jump off of them. What I didn't realize was that there was a straight up railing underneath me and so I land on it like that. Now me being the tough girl that I am, I was like, I'm not gonna pretend like that her, I'm with 10 dudes. So I just shook it off until about five seconds later, something really warm started running down my leg. I remember looking down and literally just like, blood was like just running down my jeans. Obviously, the boys started freaking out because, you know, they didn't know what to do and I was very clearly very injured. So me, I was like so calm this whole time. I was like, put me in the back of the car, let me take off my pants and get a good look at what's going on down there. Turns out, I had cut either side of that area about that long and pretty dang deep. I um, did not want to go to the doctor though, so I had the boys drive me back to my dorm and carry me into my apartment. I ended up just using some butterfly bandages to kind of stitch myself up and I, you know, called it a day. And just because I know some of you are going to be wondering, no permanent damage was done. Moral of the story, don't go rooftop jumping and don't date dumb boys. Get ready with me to tell you how my boyfriend found out I was lying about my age. Okay, before I start, I do not condone this. This is just something that happened to work out for me. And just some disclaimers. This relationship was based online. Like, obviously we're still together and like, we see each other, but this was built online. Not to mention, I was 12 years old. That seems very young, like I'm aware of that. But like, my entire life growing up, I had always been very physically and like mentally mature, at least compared to the people my age. So when I met Caden, he was 15. And honestly, my main thought process was, I don't know this kid. He lives in Canada. I'm never going to see him. This isn't going anywhere, so it doesn't matter. Like also, I thought he was really cute. And if I told him I was 12, I knew for a fact he would stop talking to me. So I kind of figured like, what's the big deal? So during one of our little getting to know each other conversations, I told him I was 15 too. And based on how I looked and spoke, I knew he wouldn't question it. Like when I was 12, people were mistaking me for 18, 21 sometimes. So I was like, I got this. So anyway, we start dating August 20th, 2014. Everything is going great, okay? We're texting all day, we're Skyping all the time. My birthday eventually comes around on November 6th. I wake up to this long, like, happy 16th birthday, I hope you have the best day, just this long, cute message. Meanwhile, it's been three months. Like, I forgot that he thought, <laughs> that he thought I was 15. So on my birthday, he thought I was turning 16. Now, the right thing to do in this situation is to come clean right then and there. Did I do that? No. My thinking was, it's my birthday. Like, if I tell him, he'll probably get really mad and I won't have a boyfriend anymore. And I'm just not getting broken up with on my birthday. That's just not happening. So I thought, no way am I ruining my day. I'll tell him in a few days, next week, something, but I'll tell him. So I went along with it. I was like, thank you. Oh my God. I go to school. Everything's normal. 
So that night we're on Skype. <laughs> then like out of nowhere, he's like, hey, um, why did your mom post on your wall happy 13th birthday? First of all, why are you searching me on Facebook? But I play it cool. I'm like, oh, <laughs> obviously it's a typo. Like she didn't mean to put that. He was like, yeah, but like, like everyone is saying happy 13th birthday. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well... So I was definitely busted and I was super scared that he was going to get mad because like I really liked him. All he ended up saying was like, you know, you do not look 13, which I knew. But I'm 21. He's turning 24 next month. It's been eight and a half years and we're very happy. Get ready with me, except yesterday I got hit by a car. So first things first is I'm going to take my Actrician ointment and put it all over my cuts and abrasions. However, I'm going to make sure I do not touch this part because that is medical super glue holding my forehead together. So we're just going to nicely apply this ointment. Don't mind the nails. <laughs> your nails don't really look perfect after getting hit by a car, I've learned. Now I have a sterilized bandage from Telfa. <laughs> and I'm just going to stick it on just like so. Now that's supplied, I'm going to take my medical tape and secure it. Then I have a fluffy hat. I'm just going to put it over. Helps hide my face. Then I'm going to take some Laneige and put that on my oh, triple the size lips. I forget about jewelry because a girl still has to look good, right? I only got hit by a car. It's nothing crazy. And last but not least, to cover my fat, massive black eyes, can I do some sunnies? <laughs> Wish me a speedy recovery. The drama in my life right now isn't even mine. It's like the shit I overhear in the school bathroom, and now I'm like invested. Yesterday I was in there minding my business doing my business and these two girls come in not to use the bathroom what they were talking about was wild now before i continue i'm not judging it's your life you you do you it's just crazy to hear now i know a decent amount of people in my grade in the grade below me so then these people i didn't recognize so which means they were like freshmen or maybe sophomores but probably freshmen so this one girl's like Oh, oh my god, like, I like your bracelet or, like, something. She gave her a compliment. She's like, thanks, like, I got it yesterday. Oh, where'd you get it? And she was like, oh, I stole it. And I was and I was like, oh, okay. Stealing is not that uncommon, so that wasn't the big shock. And then the other girl was like, oh, it's so cute. Like, do you think you could steal me one? The other girl was like, oh, yeah, like, I can steal it after school. Like, isn't your birthday soon? Like, it can be your birthday present. We can, like, do it together. And I was like, oh, my God, that's a really interesting way to bond. And then a third girl walks in and she's like, yo, not saying names, I got your shit. And then one of the girls walks away and then the other two girls start making out. Again, you do you, like, pop your pussy in the school bathroom. But they were like, like, making out and I'm sitting there like, it was, ugh. They start doing whatever they're doing and I'm sitting there like, fuck, I can't leave the bathroom right now. That's like weird. So they finish sucking face, and one of the girls is like, okay, like, I love you, bye. And she leaves the bathroom, and then another girl came in. I could tell because I was washing their shoes. Another girl came in and starts making out with the girl. I was just making out with the other girl who just did the drug deal with the other girl. And they're, like, 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 macking on each other, too. And then the new girl who just came in is talking about some, like, oh, is your ex still bothering you? Like, God, she's so annoying. And the girl's like, yeah, she was just in here, like, stalking me. Like, it was so weird. I was like, oh, you, what, what? So then I come out the bathroom, because I've been in there for a really long time. And I'm like, I give her, like, the, like, like smile. You know what I mean? And she was like, hi. And I was like, hi. And then I went back to class. And now, every day, I've been looking at everybody's shoes, trying to figure out who the fuck these girls were. Love you, and I will report. I saw a video of a girl asking if you have ever had a friend that just hated you. And I thought this was my time to shine. So I went through a lot of different like friend groups and best friends and stuff throughout my whole life, but I had one friend that I had for seven years and one friend that I had for four. And the friend I had for seven years met, um, I started becoming friends with this other girl in high school and I just introduced the two of them together. So then all three of us became a trio. 
And one weird thing about my school was that we didn't have, like, people weren't just, like, friends with just one other person. Like, there weren't a whole lot of that. It was a lot of big groups. So even though we weren't popular, everybody, like, knew of us because we were that weird group that, like, the weird trio. Like, I'm telling you, even teachers knew not to separate us because we were going to, like, back together. So fast forward to senior prom, we're going to call them Rachel and Ashley. Rachel and Ashley went to Ashley's house and decided that they were going to get ready together and I got ready at my house. Now this made sense because Rachel lived, no, I'm sorry, Ashley lived pretty far out um, and I had a hair appointment in the middle of the day so it didn't really make sense to drive all the way out there, drive back into town, drive back out there. I just got ready at my house. And if you've seen my prom pictures, you know I did Lady Gaga's Met Gala look for prom. Skipping blush and highlight because I'm doing that in a different video. So I finished my picture, uh, my makeup and I text a picture of it to Rachel. And she's like, oh, you need to take that off. You cannot wear that. That is embarrassing. Like, we do not want to be seen with that. And I'm just like, no, like, I spent two hours on it. I did not have time to take it off. I was like, no. And she was like, okay, well, then we're not going to come get you. Now, my parents had my car because one of their cars was in the shop. And I was like, you have to come get me or I can't get there. So begrudgingly, they come to my house and they pick me up. And then we meet all of our parents to go do pictures. Now, when we get there, they take one picture with me. Also, no, the whole drive over, they did not talk to me or acknowledge me. So they take one picture with me, then I get sprayed by a sprinkler and I get soaked. So now I'm crying. They do not care. They have better things to do. And then at this point, the parents are finding this weird because I'm being like completely overlooked and that's never happened before. At least that they've seen. So all the parents are like, are you okay? What's going on? I'm like, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. So we finish pictures and say farewell to our parents. So then we go to dinner, it's the most awkward thing ever, no one talks to me, so I'm just like, okay, when I get to prom, I'll find other people. At prom, some other girls hang out with us, so it's fine, it doesn't feel too awkward. Then when we get in the car to leave, Ashley looks at Rachel and is like, hey, do you want to spend the night at my house? And Rachel's like, yeah, I'd love to. So Ashley goes, great, we'll drop Allie off and then we will go to my house. And that's exactly what happened. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the story has arrived. Get your popcorn. We're gonna talk about how I got cheated on and how I walked in on my ex doing you know what with another girl. Okay, so we're going to backtrack it all the way to that morning. So I wake up, I go over to his house, I have work that day, and I'm like, hey, like I show up, there's clients, he owns an outfitter business here where I live, and I'm like, hey, like it's nice to meet you, the clients had arrived, it was a, it was a group of girls. Which, side note, it's not weird that it was girls because that happens all the time, but he rents out his house as an Airbnb to his clients, so normally he stays with me. So he was just there, like, getting him settled in and everything. So I met all of them. So I hang out there for a little bit, and then I'm like, okay, I have to leave for work. It's nice to meet y'all. And so then I leave, and he's like, can you pick me up later and take me to your house? And I was like, yeah, of course. So while I'm at work and everything, he's like acting all weird, like not Snapchatting me, which like we, our main communication was on Snapchat and text, like we did both. And so we're like, shoot, hold on. So he's just being really sketchy and everything all day long and like not really answering my questions and stuff, like just not being right. And I know he wasn't working. He was just at the house hanging out with all these girls that came in town to hunt. So we're just like, I'm like confronting him about him acting weird and everything. And I'm like, dude, you're being so weird. Like, are you cheating on me? I have like a gut feeling. And he's like, no, Taylor, like you're stupid. Like you suck as a person, like blah, 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 blah. Like literally downing me all day. And so I'm like crying at work. It's fine. I'm fine. And so then, um, so then he's like, I'm going to bed. Like, I'm going to sleep on the couch. Like, pick me up. I'm too drunk to drive to your house. And I was like, okay, whatever. That's fine. It's eight o'clock. I get off work an hour early and I show up to his house and I walk in to wake him up to pick him up and he's like on the freaking couch with this random girl mid taking a shot by the way so I walk in I'm like this is awkward like I'm gonna go home you can stay here so I leave so I get home my roommate's like uh no girlfriend like go back to the house and see if he's cheating on you so I'm like okay so I call my other girlfriend and I'm like on the phone and I pull up to his house and his like window to his um living rooms open and so like i literally like, army crawled i'm on the phone to my friends 
So I army crawl all the way up to his window and I'm listening and it is so like I cannot make this up like it is so obvious that they're about to you know what because he's like saying like take off your shirt and she's like nah. Plus I'm like looking through the window and watching this all unfold. So then I like bang on the door and everything and I'm like hey I'm here. I walk into the house. They go running. She's hiding in the closet. He's fake sleeping and I'm like I know you just cheated on me. I'm better than you. I'm better than this and I like you do not deserve me. So that's it. My best friend's boyfriend wants to cheat on her with me. She has no clue yet. I haven't sat down and talked about my personal life in so long. To give some context, she's one of my closest friends. And she's always talking about her boyfriend like and how cute he is with her. She just loves him so much. But recently, he's been ghosting. He doesn't get why. And that's when it all started. She invited me to go hang out with them. And I was like, yeah, cool. Like, what could go wrong? And honestly, I was not feeling it that day. I woke up and I had bad hair today. Like, I was not slaying. Completely gave up trying. I kind of just wanted to, like, lay down and binge watch Gossip Girls or whatever. But I got myself together because she was like, please just come. It's going to be so fun. So using this skin tint hourglass sent me. But she's done a lot of things for me. And she's been to places I dragged her to. So I went. We were having a great time till she went to go get a snack. That's when he came up to me. Weird things started happening. I was not expecting that. That, like, caught me off guard. Comes to me and says that he's, like, super into me and starts flirting basically like so close to me and he's like she doesn't have to know he's like we can make this work you know it's not a big deal the worst part is that she's like right there and she's getting a snack she's gonna come back any second now i was like well sh i was just in complete shock but i would never like even if he was timothy chalamet i would not i can't do that like she is gorgeous inside and out and she deserves someone so much better someone who only loves and thinks about her i'm getting ready for class and as much as it hurts i'm gonna tell her today i care about her okay eyes done i'll keep you guys updated if you want just hope she doesn't think it's my fault i'm gonna use this jora lip gloss they sent me oh i love it so here i go here are the story times of weird shit that my psychotic father would do my podcast episode last week i told you guys like how i don't have a dad and stuff because he's like abusive he's no longer in my life but i was like wait let me make a tiktok just about like the weird shit he would do not even like the deep and heavy shit just like the weird shit i'm aware this is a serious topic but i spent years healing from it so i'm like let's laugh a little one time my mother like forced me to text my dad talking about one of my cheer competitions all you guys need to know is that i misspelled competition in this text message this man came in my room at like 11 30 at night dragged me downstairs made me sit down with a pen and paper and and spell competition correctly. He was like, I can't believe you don't know how to fucking spell competition. Like you're a junior in high school. Like you're gonna sit here and you're gonna spell it correctly. And I was like, this is why I don't fucking text you because you're literally insane. It's like, you're gonna be here all night if you don't get to spelling. And like gave me a piece of paper and a pen and like literally forced me to spell it. Here's the issue. I still didn't know how to fucking spell it. Obviously, if I'm misspelling it, I do not know how to spell the word. Did he just think it was gonna magically come to me? So I'm sitting there, I'm like, competition. I'm pounding it out like, competition. Like I couldn't. I I still can't fucking spell competition to this day. He's like making me write it and I'm getting pissed. I'm like, you're so fucking dumb and weird. Like who does this? I'm screaming for my mom. I'm like, mom. He's like, your mother's not gonna come and help you with this. I'm like, I just wanna go to bed. Like I have school at seven in the morning. Like fuck how to spell competition. I don't need that. At this point, 30 minutes has gone by and I'm still not spelling competition correctly. And I'm like, whatever, fuck this. I'm going to bed. And he's like, if you move, I'm taking away your phone. I just look at him and I go, wait, my mother pays for my phone. You can't do shit. I awoke in the beast with that statement. At this point, my mother comes down the stairs and she's like, what the fuck is happening? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, this fucking psychopath is making me spell competition because I misspelled it in a text message and I still don't know how to fucking spell it, mom. I was like, just go to bed. Like, leave it. Like, just go. My dad's like, if you move, it's going to be a problem. I'm taking your phone. I'm like, the phone mom pays for it. Mm. And I walked up my stairs and took my ass to bed, but I was like, I still don't. I literally still don't know how to spell competition. And guess what? I'm successful regardless. That's why we have autocorrect. But why the fuck did I have to sit and spell on it? Like, this man was just insane. This next story, my mom says, is the reason that they, like, got divorced. It was, like, a Thursday night, and I was cooking my sister dinner. And we're laughing. We're having a good time in the kitchen. So, obviously, I'm cooking dinner, and I have, like, the cabinets open because, like, I'm grabbing spices. I'm doing my thing. My father walks in the kitchen, and our laughs were like, ah, ha, 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 to, like, like, when that man walked in, we were like, 
what the fuck does the beast want? Go to part two. Here's some crazy things that my parents would let me do as a kid. I got two tattoos at 14. Wouldn't recommend. I was in the fourth grade. My mom took me to get my first set of fake nails. They were purple and I got a design on every nail. In the sixth grade, my mom would let me and my friend go to the beach and it was an hour away on public transit and we would go by ourselves and like spend the whole day there. Toronto public transit, may I add. This was me one of those days. I always looked a lot older than my age. I don't know if that made my parents think that I was older, but I was 11 in this. I was either 11 or 12. In like the fifth grade, my mom would let my friend sleep over, including this one guy friend that we had. We would set up the tent outside and sleep in the tent. We would set it up in the backyard, not just outside anywhere. That'd be crazy. I started wearing makeup in like the third or fourth grade, and I would wear so much makeup that my teachers literally took my older brother out of his classroom to ask if my parents knew that I was wearing this makeup to school. If I didn't feel like going to school, I didn't have to, and if I got bad grades, my parents would just ask if I tried my best. It kind of just allowed me to take responsibility for my life at a very young age. They would say stuff like, you'll make the best decisions for yourself. Like, girl, maybe I need some guidance. Maybe just a little. <laughs> if you have some time. Also, if I got in trouble at school, my mom wouldn't automatically take the teacher's side. She would always ask me what happened first, and then she would always take my side. Honestly, I think they're like this because I'm the youngest. I kind of like gave up because my brother, his experience was different. This Sephora worker literally made me feel so insecure. Basically, I went in there because it was the last day of the Sephora sale and I wanted to like, pick up things that I've been eyeing for a while. One of the things that I have been eyeing is the Drunk Elephant sunscreen. Some days I go into Sephora wanting to be talked to, but today was not one of those days. I was not trying to spend more money. I was just like testing it. So this worker just approaches me. Before I get more into this story, I love my Sephora workers. They're so sweet to me basically she comes up to me and she's like oh like that sunscreen's not that good like try the polish choice sunscreen i'm like oh okay like, i tried the polish choice sunscreen i'm like oh look, this is pretty good like thanks for showing me it like bye like then she sees a glow recipe dew drops in my basket and she's like oh, the recipe isn't that good like it has fragrance she goes especially because you have clogged pores here and like i can see a breakout on your skin She's like, oh, like I see that you have clogged pores. Like, let me show you the skin fix set that you should be using to like get rid of them. And at this point, I'm like, shit, like you might as well. Like, I'm already self-conscious. Like, I'm insecure now. Like, she shows me the skin fix set. I understand that she was trying to be helpful, but it just made me feel insecure. I honestly love going to Sephora because I feel like beauty is like fun. Personally, I use makeup and like skincare as just like some like a fun hobby self-expressing through. I wonder if anybody else had like similar experiences where a Sephora worker had good intentions, but like it made you feel more insecure because girl, you're not alone. 